you are the roast master general <clears throat> in not just the United States of America, worldwide, <laughs> <laughs> worldwide. And you know, it occurred to me we should probably start where all things must start, which is with Don Rickles. We lost Don a couple of years ago, but um, you have picked up that mantle. I mean, you know, you are the guy that everyone thinks of now when you think of insult comic, and you always have amazing jokes. You Thank get you. terrific jokes. Thank you. Do you write them all? Do you ever? Do you have people that help you out? My cousin Ed and my, <laughs> my other buddy Ed, and sometimes for the big roasts, you know, full-on writing staff will, will, will help everyone on the dais, but um, I mostly try to do my own. Right. And have, you know, a couple friends who know me real well sit around with me, and I, I, I don't really accept jokes, but I like to hone them with people. Yeah. Now, one of the it things... It sounds more personal, because if they sound... Um, what do you call it? Recycled. They start to sound mean or or, or predictable. But mm -hmm. I really want it to be like a suit when I roast somebody, tailor made just for them. Also, I think people appreciate that. If you're, you know, if you're doing jokes about someone and telling them they're so fat that when they, you know, they need to leave the house to, it, it's a standard <laughs> joke. I'm going to work on that one, by the way. I know, that <laughs> was really end? <laughs> oh, trust me. Oh no, it's going places. That joke. <laughs> what Jeff will tell you is that you start with that. And then you work on it. Um, but you... Uh, well, thank you for that nice compliment off the bat about Don. He really was the, what do they call it, the Sultan of Insultin. And yes. He did teach me a lot. Uh, so I, I, I appreciate that. There was a few years there where if you were a big shot having a 50th birthday or a 40th, you know, a big a big birthday, you'd have to have me and Don, you know. That's and, great. And he would inevitably... Um, go on after me and make I'd always I'd always write the jokes and I'd always have papers of jokes yeah yeah and like John Stamos asked me and and, and Don Rickles to roast him for his 50th at this fancy uh, hotel and, and, and tuxedos and the whole thing and I come in with pages of stuff you know John Stamos is so good looking his birthday candles blew themselves <laughs> <laughs> and like I really prepared and John asked me to prepare and then Rickles goes on after me and just makes fun of me for preparing yes well this is what I wanted to bring up the way in which you're different from Rickles now I'll start with the day I I had an experience about 15 years ago my wife and I are in a, uh, a flight cross country we get on the plane, I'm putting my stuff in the overhead compartment, and I start to hear someone say, Jesus Christ, the learning guy on this plane. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I'm sort of hearing it out of the, and I'm thinking, what? And then he's like, man, goddamn, fucking Irish. Are they the Irish on the plane? This far up, you'd think the Irish would be further back. And I sort of start to get a little like, I'm tired and I'm frustrated, so I get irritated and I turn around, Don Rickles is sitting right behind Liza and I, and he's sitting there, and I swear the definition of being happy as a pig and shit was my wife and I both, we never, I don't think I strapped in the whole flight, where both of our heads are peeking over behind <laughs> us, and the whole flight, he's going after me, and then he's going after, you know, what are your plans? We told him he went after our plans. Then he starts going after Newhart, who he was best <laughs> friends with, who he knew that I knew. Yeah. And uh, just on and on and on, and it was, that flight felt like it was 20 seconds long. <laughs> but what, here's what I've always thought about, it's, it's interesting, because I, uh, for lack of for lack of anything better to do, I think about comedy a lot. You and I was thinking about you uh, this morning. Um, you are someone who, and I, I give you a lot of credit for this. I'm a big believer in preparation. I think you prepare very, very, very well. I think mm -hmm. you take these things really seriously, and your jokes are very crafted. I'm going to say that. And I love Don. Don had a different technique. Mm -hmm. He would he was a nerve comic in a lot of ways. He wouldn't I mean, there were so many times I saw him. If you saw him like on a D. Martin roast, yes, he had material, but so often he mm -hmm. would just go by the seat of his pants. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't so much crafted, intricate insults. Do you know what I mean? It was a in full on it was a full on bear attack in the moment. <laughs> and if you went back and looked at the transcript, you'd say, some of this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> You know, you anyway. look at this guy over here, and, you know, and he would come on my show and do stuff. And every now and then, you'd uh, one of my favorite things that he used to say was, you'd say something, be like, "Oh, good, good for you, smart guy. What do you want a cookie?" And I just thought, <laughs> and I think I just laughed because he said cookie. Right. What do you want a cookie? 
Oh, yeah, yeah. His timing. It yeah. was just the way he said it. And, <laughs> and you know, he did chastise me, and I did get embarrassed, you know, like, oh, God, I, I'm the kid who did all the homework. And, and, and he would go up and he after me and, and crush. And it always kind of bothered me. I, maybe it was my skin wasn't thick enough to take it from him. And then couple of years after that that Stamos thing I, I was at Bo, at Don's memorial at a synagogue mm -hmm. and you know all the comics are sitting there were all invited and remember Judd Apatow's right in front of me and all the guys are that and and um, Don's uh, manager Tony comes walking over to me and he says Jeff can you speak in the mo this is something I would have prepared a month for <sighs> had I known and I look at Joe, I go, this is Don challenging me oh. right now to talk. <laughs> no, pap no papers, kid. And I did it. I just stood up oh. and I took the mic and handled my business for five minutes. And it was funny and it was sweet. And I remember being like, freaking Don taught me something from yes. the grave oh yeah. that God. I can do it. And somewhere in the beyond, he's like, what do you want, a cookie? <laughs> <laughs> and I do always want a cookie. So that did work out.